What is the best drunk story you have about a friend that you're not allowed to tell in their presence? 20 years old, let friends stay at house after a party, continue drinking into the night. Go to bed. Wake up next day, go into living room where I had three friends sleeping. Poop everywhere. Poop. Flip my ass. Friend crawling on floor grabs my leg and we're Who shit on me? He's covered in S. In S stained underwear. His pants across the room on the floor, poop larger than I've ever seen in them, and a smear trail leading away. He denies it even today. He was a big guy, and the amount of poop was devastating. I had to replace furniture. After a lovely Italian banquet, dressed semi-formally, my best friend, her brother, and his girlfriend and I decide to continue drinking at our local watering hole. My friend ate tripe and God only knows what else and upon arrival at the bar, announces that she needs to go. Except it's like AF high school reunion in there and she refuses to poop in a small two-stall extremely crowded bathroom. So we head back outside and she finds an alley and proceeds to liquid S a mare 20 feet from the bar with me on watch out. All's better and she's finishing up when a gust of hot wind comes from behind her and takes the stink of poo directly into my face. I immediately vomited. We both don't like to talk about it. My ex once showed up at 2 in the morning unannounced after we had been broken up for 2 weeks. She is hammered drunk, so I just put her to bed because I had to work in the morning and didn't even want to deal with her. About an hour later I wake up and she is squatting down on my floor taking a piss. I turn the light on and I'm like, WTF are you doing? She pulls her pants up pushes me away and calls me some other dude's name. She's grabbing her stuff to leave and I'm pretty pissed at this point so just let her leave super drunk. I clean up the piss and go back to bed. About an hour later someone is pounding on my door again. I open it and it's her she's like hey what are you doing? And like you just pissed on my floor and left. She responds with pfff I wasn't even here. My girlfriend at the time got completely smashed by trying to play some catch up. She showed up two hours later than everyone else and decided chugging some Smirnoff would be the best way to catch up. Yada, 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 and I end up taking her home to try to sleep it off. She has some water and insists that she is fine laying in bed. Well I figure she's asleep and safe so I drunkenly go downstairs to make some 3am KD. I come upstairs about 20 minutes later to find my bed empty, and the bathroom light on and the door closed. So I knock a few times and call her name but get no response. Worrying, I open up the door and am greeted by the worst stench I've ever experienced. Turns out she had one to puke in the toilet and ended up passing out and shitting all over the floor and herself. So I had to man up and clean her up and put her back into bed. The next morning she asked about it and I didn't say much other than the puking side of things, and that was the end of that. A few years ago, on New Year's Eve my friend, who will call I'm got tit shattered drunk, she made that phrase up that night. After having such fun adventures as telling the guy with his dick out that she's seen better and falling off the toilet and into the shower I decided it was time to take her drunk ass home. My dad lived about 3 miles away so after stuffing her into the car I brought her on over and deposit her in the first available room with a bed. I go into the kitchen to get her some good old H2O when I hear Alien Aileen, M is taking her clothes off. Go to the back of the house and sure enough M has someone batten her dress off but is tangled up in her tights and lo and behold, she's got no underwear on. My poor father is facing the wall in the opposite direction and is the reddest I have ever seen him. Even his bald spot was a lovely shade of maroon. Anyways I get him all situated and go out to find my dad. He just looks at me and says we shall never speak of this again. And it was so. TL, DR, friend got drunk and gave my dad a strip show. One of my friends managed to glue her teeth together and then proceeded to black out with her head half in a toilet. Edit, let me clarify by saying that she was fine, she had vomited beforehand and her boyfriend unstuck her jaw. I don't know how, I felt it was best to just leave it there. A big group of my friends went out one night after some pretty serious pre-gaming. They get to a bar, drink some more, everyone's really wasted and a couple hours pass. Eventually the group reconvenes and decides to call it a night. At this point, they realize one person, let's call him K, is missing. But they just assume he's found his way home and leave. The next morning, K is nowhere to be found. It isn't until 24 hours later that they finally found out what happened. K got so drunk he went running naked through the city until the police finally arrested him. He blew a BAC of 0.288. My freshman year of college me and my small group of friends went to my boyfriend's family's cabin for a weekend of drinking. The first night there we all got pretty ass and somehow the night ended in me and the other girl in the group having a competition to see who can get their boyfriend to stay hard longest. Then it turned into a blowjob race. And then it ended in the two couples of the group having sex with their partner, with the odd guy out just jerking it. All of this was going on in the same room. Everybody swore to not speak of it after that night. 
my cousin took me and two other friends out to celebrate the new year. One of the friends, Amy, had not eaten before drinking and demanded McDonald's. As we were pulling in a near empty parking lot at the hour only people like us are out, her favorite song came on. She opened the door of the moving vehicle, jumped out, and landed on her feet. Then began to shake it like a salt shaker across the parking lot. Five of us spent the weekend in horrors a while back, before it was so murdery. One dude drank nothing but tequila and spent the whole night chatting up a girl he was convinced was the hottest thing he had ever seen. We spent the whole night trying to convince him she was a dude. One blowjob in an alley later, she flops out her cock for reciprocation. He actually threw up on him, her and ran out to us yelling FFF. We laughed and laughed. And laughed. Then laughed some more. If we ever try to tell that story around them, he will take his ball and go home immediately. A friend of mine once drunkenly pulled out her tampon and chewed on it. Then she tried to, like, have sex with slash strangle everyone. We're not really friends anymore. But that is a story that's never been told to her, because we all think she doesn't really remember, and if she does is way too mortified to acknowledge it, so we all just silently share the horrifying memory of that night. We had a big party at my house, and my female best friend got very, very drunk. In the morning, I woke to find that she had puked all over my bathroom. I then followed her trail of destruction upstairs. I see that my 13-year-old son's bedroom is ajar. Fortunately, he is with his mother that weekend because when I peer in the open door, I find my friend passed out and wearing nothing below the waist. Not only is she bottomless, she is laying spread eagle in such a way that I get a full, wide open crotch shot. Not thinking, I quickly retreated downstairs to avoid embarrassing her and to clean up her vomit in the downstairs bathroom. I didn't close the door, not wanting to wake her and have her discover me staring right at her crotch. A short time later, my 17-year-old comes downstairs from his room. He lets us know that he got the same view I did. If I ever mention that story again, I think our 10 year plus friendship will be over. I was at my friend's party and things were winding down. People were leaving so me and a couple of friends decided we were too drunk to leave and stayed the night. I slept on the floor next to my friend's bed and woke up at about 3 in the morning to him getting up. He proceeded to walk over to the corner of his closet and start peeing. I got up and asked him what the hell he was doing and tried pulling up his pants for him but he pushed me away and said let a brother take his piss. He still to this day denies that he did it to everyone I tell it to. My friend and I were extremely intoxicated and decided we really needed to take a piss in the woods near a house party we had gone to. As we were both perched on a hill, her behind me, squatting and holding onto the ground for dear life, she fell and I proceeded to pee on her face. She didn't even yell for me to stop. One night, my girlfriend and I ended up at the same bar, but we had taken separate cars since she had attended a bridal tea for a friend earlier. Her phone died, so we couldn't coordinate beforehand. After meeting up at the bar, we realized it was a practical to drive two cars home. My roommate was also at the bar, so I approached him. Hey man, you mind driving my car back home? Chelsea just got here, and we'll just take her car back home. He agreed, asking, sure. You getting food before? Yeah, we're going to run across the Waffle House first, I replied. He said, cool, you mind getting me an all-star breakfast? Since he was doing me a favor, I agreed. At Waffle House, the service was terrible. I ordered two all-star breakfasts, which includes bacon, eggs, grits, toast, and a waffle for under $7, one to go and one to split with Chelsea. Half of our dine-in order never came, and we didn't get our waters before the waiter asked if we wanted our check. I explained I wanted to pay for what was on the table, cancel the rest of the order, and leave. The waiter, feeling bad, comped everything. Not wanting to take advantage, I decided it was best to leave without the second all-star breakfast. Chelsea and I headed home. While stumbling up the stairs, I heard all-star breakfast scream from my roommate's room. Worried about explaining why I didn't have his all-star breakfast, I reached the top of the stairs and heard another blaring all-star breakfast. I pushed open his door to start my explanation. Dude, I'm so sore. What the F? I saw a chick riding him cowgirl style, and he had tossed a comforter over her top half. He didn't stop and kept thrusting. What's up dude, where's my all-star breakfast? I tried to block the view with my hand and look him in the eye. Dude. It's fine. All-star breakfast? Dude, we couldn't get it. We had terrible service. All-star breakfast. I'm sorry we couldn't get it. They didn't even make us pay. All-star breakfast. Being the sweetheart she is, Chelsea tried to intervene, entering the room. Yeah, Sean. The service was just OH with the F. All-star breakfast? I told her, it's fine, babe. Let's just go to bed. 
I guided her out of the room, and she offered some parting wisdom over her shoulder. Come large. We went to bed, leaving my roommate to finish. The girl was someone he worked with, who quit the next day. We never heard from her again. About two or so years ago, my friend's sister was turning 18, so the family held a party for her before she went to a club. My friend himself, both younger, got to invite me and a few others over as well as his sister's own friends. We're all drinking to celebrate before she and her friends go for the night, and everyone there becomes absolutely plastered, parents included. At this stage the sister and friends are gone, so it's me, my friend and some of our other friends, as well the parents and some of their friends. We were still drinking, but we had retired to the TV for a bit. Remote isn't working, turns out it's missing batteries entirely. Friend says to his mother that there's no batteries in the remote, she responds saying that she left them I and her vibrator. Cue silence, then everyone except my friend laughing hysterically. Mother tries to ameliorate the situation saying she was joking and that she doesn't have a vibrator. Friend's dad chimes in yeah, it's my vibrator. More laughter, more disgust, forever a good memory, except for my friend, who gets annoyed if we ever bring this up again near him. TLDR, parents, if you have vibrators don't talk to your kids snout them. It's crossing a line. Went to a house party in high school with a couple of buddies, let's call them John and Marcus. After a couple of hours Marcus was fairly drunk and talking up a rather unattractive young lady. A few minutes later they headed upstairs together. About five minutes passed and John, who was also rather intoxicated, stood up and went after them. From where I was sitting I could see up the stairs and I watched as John proceeds to kick open the locked bedroom door and scream you'll thank me for this tomorrow. A moment later he comes out with Marcus over his shoulder and stormed out of the front door. I drove them both home. Marcus thanked John the next day. A group of us went to a pretty busy bar in Ocean City, Maryland. We each had a buddy so if we get lost we at least have each other. Well 10 minutes in my buddy and I get kicked out for crowd surfing. A few others stayed after we left and one decided to leave with us. My one lady friend though it would be a good idea to have a hardcore makeout session with a pretty sleazy man in a dark corner of a bathroom. Well apparently it went farther than making out and she gave him a handy. He blew his load all over her and she tried to wipe some of it on the wall. She then had to ride the bus back to the apartment drunk and have covered with jazz. She's getting married in a few months and better be prepared for this story to come out when I'm good and toasted. A few years ago I moved into this house where the roommates used to throw parties pretty regularly. It was always the same big group of friends, and it was always enjoyable because people never got destructive or violent and we all just had a great, drunken time. So, for reference, this house had two bathrooms, one downstairs by the kitchen, which was perpetually in use during parties. The other was upstairs and generally didn't get used unless it was an emergency. So anyway, this one party is getting pretty crazy. Someone brought a bottle of 151 and we're all pretty wasted. End of the night, the roommates and I say goodnight and head upstairs. One of my roommates goes in the bathroom for a piss and finds S smeared all over the place. On the floor, on the toilet, all over the walls around the toilet, just everywhere. He's wasted, I'm wasted, everybody is wasted, and now we're pretty f nauseated and proceed to clean up all the poo the best we drunkenly can. Which basically meant using every paper towel in the house and a whole bunch of bleach and the most caustic cleaners we could find. Anyway, the next day my roommate gets a phone call from the S mirror, who turns out to be one of our close friends, who is the nicest, quietest guy you'll ever meet. He basically half remembered having a correlated accident and called to apologize. He had no idea how bad it was. He said he pooped and missed the toilet, the poo landing on the floor, then all the smears were from him picking it up and putting it in the toilet, then fumbling around the bathroom with poo hands trying to clean himself off. We are never allowed to discuss this. Partly because it was so very disgusting, and partly because the pooper was so mortified and is genuinely one of the sweetest people I know. A few months ago my friend was at a party, where he got shit-faced and declared to the entire room, directed at this girl who he wasn't even talking to beforehand, you gotta pick, it's either me, or this guy and pointed a thumb at himself. After that he yelled that these were his people, and has proceeded to shove his face in said girl's chest and more about to his heart's content. He also had body slammed his friend's brother into a furnace, splitting his head open. He had actually texted this friend the morning after, asking him if he had behaved. His friend, knowing what happened to his brother, said yeah you were really good last night completely seriously. He had thought he'd done well that night. This is less a story about me and more a story about my friend's mom. But anyway, my friend and her mom took a trip to Germany, because that's where our mom grew up, and while they were there, they went with some family to a bar. My friend was 17 at the time, and although it was legal for her to drink as well, she didn't feel comfortable drinking that much. But her mom and her mom's sister got pissed drunk like any proper German. 
Well, it comes to be very late at night and they have to go home, so my friend had to hold her mom and her aunt by the hand as they walked back. At some point along the way, both the mom and the aunt decide they really need to go pee. Well, there's no restrooms anywhere nearby, so they decide that they can just pull their underwear from under their skirts and pee in some flower pots on the walkway to someone's house. Well, the owner of the house didn't appreciate that much. This elderly German woman starts yelling at them and chasing them away with a broom. My friend had to pull two pantyless, stumbling drunk, middle-aged women through Germany. TL, DR don't piss in flower pots in Germany. A friend of ours decided to get really hammered and started his toy first off with a Long Island iced tea. Three or four hours later we are sitting in Jimmy John's drunker than a sea captain after a long voyage and realize holy s we lost him. We found our friend two blocks away waving at cars and promptly walked him to a nearby restaurant for some water and rest. He ends up throwing up on himself as we wait for our ride and we carry him to the car. As we near his apartment to end the night he passes out and shits his pants. He was in bad shape. He still made the effort to tell us to F off and go away as we carried his limp body up the stairs to his apartment. As we were carrying him, a car went by and stopped. Just imagine seeing three dudes stumbling up some stairs with what looks like a dead body at 3 AM. You're going to stop. Luckily nobody got out and we proceeded to place drunk friend in the tub and clean him off as best we could. I monitored his well-being for the next four hours to make sure we didn't need a doctor. He remembers none of this. In college, one of my friends was waiting for a bus back to campus from downtown since his girlfriend was not feeling well after a night of drinking. Enter, a mob of loud, obnoxious, and drunk black girls who clearly did not care about anyone else in the world. My friend politely asked them to keep it down, as some people were not having the best of nights. Mere seconds later, he would feel the fury of the Black Panthers as they rained blow after blow upon him with his girlfriend stood beside him in horror. After my friend took their beating and it seemed like things were over, one of the girls turns around and throws a full slice of pizza at him that lands right on his chest, completely crushing his soul and instilling a fear of large black women that he will never be able to shake. It was roughly 2 AM and my ex was drinking with a few friends and these nerf guns somehow got involved. Long story short, my ex's friends end up running down the highway with my ex in pursuit. Now, the kicker is no one realized how bad it would look to have my Spanish ex in a big, puffy, black jacket with a toque chasing down a group of white boys, all in the while waving a Nerf gun in the air screaming, I'm going to kill you. Things cool off and they run into a July 11th to get a drink while my ex is outside catching his breath. Next thing he knows, a SWAT team of police cars show, they draw their guns and tell him to get on his hands and knees. Helicopter shows, and spotlights on him. His friends come outside and see him, with a police officer shoving his face into the concrete. The next day, he was just finishing up telling me this story at work. We both worked at a grocery store together and a customer had overheard and was so excited to meet him as he saw the whole ordeal the night before. I tend to love this story yet he was never amused by it. This happened to my dad's friend while I was still a mere child. It's the morning after a long night of partying for them my dad and stepmom let their friend while Paul and Paul sleep on the couch. Well come morning my stepmom goes downstairs to see an empty bottle of vodka and Paul on the couch with a blanket and a whole lot of fi not to mention there was a porno playing on the TV. So she doesn't say anything but she's cracking up and goes upstairs to tell my dad to tell him to wake his ass up before I woke up because I would get excited and jump on him to wake him up. Paul is a super cool guy to me as a kid and we still hang out when my parents invite him over. So my dad goes down and sees this and is like dude. And he stands up still plastered and butt naked. So my dad is trying to force him out of the house and he's screaming stuff like dude grocer f dom is touching me. Needless to say he was so embarrassed he didn't come back over or contact us for a full year. None of us were mad it was just a hilarious thing that could have been much worse if I woke up before my parents. My friend was in town visiting and we had a pretty good party that weekend. The highlight of the party was my pal attempting an Olympic sit up. This is where you challenge a drunk idiot to complete a sit up from the starting point of being restrained by a towel held across the face covering the eyes. A quarter is placed on the towel, and the aspiring Olympian is told that he must complete the sit-up before the quarter hits the ground upon the towel being yanked away. He is not told that a big greasy sweaty drunk bastard will be squatting over his face. So my buddy is all gung ho for the challenge, and with a mighty grunt followed with a wet slap he launches himself face first into the nastiest ass at the party, tip the nose in the pooper and balls on chin. Every witness was immediately crippled with laughter as this is just the sore of comedy best appreciated by drunk college ages dudes. My friend was the only one not laughing, he instead went into a crazed Hulk rage that lasted a good hour and it took several of us to retrieve him from terrorizing the apartment complex. 20 years later and he would still go berserk if someone were foolish enough to speak of the event in his presence. What about you? Tell us your story in comment section, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Right now!